This is going to be a slightly different video as it's not going to feature either a harpsichord or a spinet. In fact, the featured instrument is arguably historically inappropriate for the piece I have chosen to play, although in its own way it is also a historical instrument. So historical, in fact, that part of its operation relies on obsolete storage media. Behind me is a Yamaha Clavinova CVP-65 that my dad bought in the early 1990s. Now, you have to imagine that back then I was still studying piano and that this type of technology was not as readily available as it is today. So, to me, this was a very exciting instrument, especially because some of its capabilities that I will talk about shortly. For anyone who wants to use it today, it has a variety of inputs and outputs, and you can also connect a MIDI, so in many respects it has lost none of its functionality, and it's perfectly usable today. Ironically, though, the one feature I liked so much at the time is the one I cannot really use anymore, although nowadays there are other ways to achieve the same results. Let's look a little more closely at its features and you will see what I mean. Let me give you a quick tour of the instrument. Starting from the left of the instrument, you can see that it has a fairly extensive set of features, especially considering we're dealing with a 30-year-old instrument. However, the more unique and more advanced features are to be found on the right side of the instrument. As you can see, there is a slot for a 3.5-inch disc more commonly known as floppy disk, and let me show you one right here that I have on the music stand. So that's what a three and a half inch floppy disk is. And this is a magnetic storage medium used by computers back then, but which I would estimate had gone out of fashion by 2005 or so. Now let's get back to the slot for the disk and then next to it there are several buttons that have to do with various playback functions and then there are three buttons labeled record and then three more buttons below that labeled playback that's the feature I like the most and what it does is allow you to record and combine up to 10 individual tracks. Let me demonstrate how this works by giving you a preview of how I went about recording the piece you will hear after this introduction, which is Bach's Chorale Ich Ruf zu dir, Herr Jesu Christ, BWV 639. So what I have done is to focus the camcorder to the right side of the clavidova so that you can see the operations that I'm going to be using. So you can see exactly the procedure that I follow. And before I do this, let me mention very briefly that this chorale has a three voice texture. What this means is that we have the melody in the soprano, then we have a middle voice which you can think of as some sort of harmonic elaboration, and then we have the bass line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start recording each one of the voices individually, and I will start with the middle voice, in other words, what I called the harmonic elaboration. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, choose my sounds and for this particular voice I have chosen to use two sounds together and those are harp and harpsichord. So let me choose harp and harpsichord 
So now we have this ready. The next step is to press the record one button, which I can do right now. So the Clavinova is going to start recording the moment I start playing. So let me go ahead and play now the middle line. Okay, then I press the record button again and now you can see that the light for playback 1 is lighting up. By the way, I forgot to mention I only played the first section of the chorale. So what I'm going to do now, you can tell if I press this start stop button, then I can hear what I actually recorded. etc etc. So now I'm going to record the bass line. For this one I have chosen the sound called upright bass soft. So let me get to that sound. It's ready. Then I'm going to press the second record button, the one labeled 2. And basically what is happening right now is that the moment I start playing the bass line, the first recording is going to be played along. So I'm basically adding a second voice to my first recording. Let's start and try this now. Again, I press the record button again. Now you can see that the first two playback lights are lit. This means that now I can listen to both of these lines that I just recorded. Etc, etc. So now let's add the soprano line. Let's add the melody. So what I'm going to do here is choose first of all the sound. In this case I have chosen the vibraphone plus celesta. So let me get to those two sounds. So celesta and vibes. Okay so now I have my sound ready. And the next thing I'm going to do is press the third recording button. And the moment I start, we're going to hear the other two voices being played back. And basically now we have our entire track, let's say, because now I have recorded all three voices and we can listen to it.
So you can basically do this for up to 10 tracks. So the, the last record and playback button actually have the numbers 3 through 10 written above them, meaning that you can use those buttons to actually record additional tracks. The other cool thing is that I can choose to listen to any of the three tracks that I have recorded, either individually or in different combinations. So for example, maybe I want to just listen to the melody. Or maybe I want to listen to the melody and the bass line. the melody plus the middle voice so again you have a wonderful array of possibilities with this instrument since this was a short demonstration all the data was stored in the Clavinova's internal memory. This internal memory, however, is very limited. So for anything more extended, the data can only be saved directly to a three and a half inch floppy disk. So the first issue is one of obsolescence. Floppy disks disappeared over a decade ago. Thankfully, I still have some blank floppy disks, so I could bypass that issue. However, perhaps the bigger problem is that the disk drive is no longer working. And this means that, as I found out, the internal memory is not enough even for a complete recording of this chorale. Here is how the recording process unfolded. Since I wanted to use a different combination of instruments for each of the musical lines, the idea was to record each one of the lines separately and combine them exactly as I was doing in the demonstration. And since this is a fairly short piece, I was hoping that the internal memory would be able to handle it. However, it turned out that I could only record the middle and bass voices, and when I tried to record the melody, the memory ran out after a few notes. To make matters worse, if you turn off the clavinova, you lose everything that is stored in the internal memory, which is not that illogical given that for any serious work, you would be using the disk drive anyway. So I knew that everything had to be done pretty much in real time. What I did was to set up the camcorder to be ready for the final performance. Then I first recorded the middle voice, then added the bass line, and finally I filmed my performance of the melody with the two other pre-recorded voices being played back by the clavinova. A few remarks about the performance. If we think in terms of Baroque performance practice, there are important aspects of phrasing and articulation that will not work very successfully on this instrument. So while aspects of the phrasing may reflect Baroque performance practice, I primarily tried to listen to the instrument and adjust my playing accordingly. Similarly, in terms of ornamentation, I decided to experiment with certain types of embellishing that I would normally not have done. For those of you curious to know what its piano sound sounds like, I will put a link in the description to a video where I played back a recording of the first movement of Beethoven's Piano Sonata Opus 111 I had made in the summer of 1992. The disk drive was thankfully still working a few years ago, and I could play back and save all the recordings I had made. As always, thank you for watching.
and I hope you enjoy the performance. <laughs>